Hey, it's Chris, Legion Games. Now, today, we're going to be looking at one of the Spiel de Jahres recommended games called Rift Force. Now, again, small box game. There's a lot packed in here, though. What do you need to know? Pros, cons, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, everything in between, whether or not it's right for you. Let's talk. Now, with Rift Force here, this is... If you've ever imagined yourself as an avatar, you know, not uh, that avatar, not the blue one, but imagining yourself as an airbender or a firebender or an earthbender, you know, that avatar, this is a concept sort of incorporated in that sense, where you are dealing with one of the unique guilds in this game drafting them potentially at the beginning of the game and then playing them to a set of battlefields that are common between you and another player in order to capture them to score more points more quickly than your opponents now it's using i'll tell you straight out from the beginning very much a similar scheme that we've seen in a lot of these two-player asymmetric ish drafting ish card games you know, if you're familiar with Battleline or the Battleline Medieval, or perhaps you're more familiar with something like Crimson Company, which is more recent with the drafting of the asymmetric uh, heroes, characters, and then playing them to the battlefield with their abilities. Well, this is a different concept of that uh, same sort of trope where you have these different guilds, these different elemental masters, and you have the ability to play these cards that are numbered that go to certain areas. Unlike those other ones that I just mentioned, you know, where you are playing one card at a time, you have the ability to play up to three cards at a time here in sort of the same number or the same type, the same guild. And there are three values which represent their life points. And so when you destroy a monster or when you control an area by a certain amount, you get points. I think first one up to like 12 is the winner. So... How does this play? I mean, like I said, right, there are 10 different factions that you're going to be dealing with. And unlike those games where it is less about the bigger picture and it's more about the individual, tactical, pure side of things, where the randomization is the biggest aspect of this game. This game takes it a slightly different direction, and I think that's why it has gotten more of the recommendation and the acclaim or the recognition in general. I think that's maybe why this game has gotten more of the recognition in the first place, because it takes it just a notch up in terms of the complexity and the depth from that side of things. I mean, you'll notice that I said that there are 10 different guilds, right? So the biggest question in a game like this is, okay, well, how am I choosing these? Well, I, simple, it's just drafting. So first and foremost, um, that's something you need to be aware of and the abilities that each of these guilds have. Now, the other thing is two of these guilds each time are not used. So therein lies the variability. Therein lies the replayability as well. The tricky part of this and the step up is that this game is, and, and I'll put this as both a pro and a con right now. We'll start right here and we'll go into this. It evolves into more of a meta than those other games do. It, it really does because the meta extends to the point in which you're drafting the combinations of these for the synergy. Because you have ones that are more manipulators, you have ones that are more attackers, you have ones that are more able to move between the five locations, and you have ones that are just more super strong and static. And so you play the first game or two in this, and again, honestly, you're not going to have a clue what you're doing. But this is a game that is going to benefit from repeated plays. Repeated plays with the same partner. And so therein lies the biggest pro and con. Like, is that your situation? Or are you going to be playing this with multiple people over multiple games and multiple times? Because if you do, then you will have a distinct advantage over someone who has not played it before in terms of the drafting, in terms of the synergy between these factions. And therein lies the biggest difference between that and, say, Battle Line or Crimson Company, where it is purely tactical. Where you are playing literally 
the hand that you are dealt or the card that is flipped over. And that is the main thing that you are dealing with. That is probably the biggest one that is going to be the most divisive in terms of whether or not Rift Horse is for you. Because the gameplay itself is relatively simple and straightforward. The abilities are very easy to understand. They are very complementary depending on how you want to integrate them from that side of things. There's no question about, oh, how does this one work? No. It's very straightforward. I'm not saying it's super easy to make the right combinations because it's still difficult, but it definitely has a next level strategy, especially when you're layering these cards one on top of each other and you want to hit a one and you are hitting one of them only to have it layered in between other ones now and you can't kill it because they have successfully defended it by moving someone else in place to take some of the damage. But then you also have other cards that will allow you to, okay, well, I don't have to deal damage to just the top one. I can deal damage to any of them or all of them at the same time. So again, layers upon layers. So what did I like about Rift Force? I mean, it definitely, in terms of those games that I mentioned, it definitely stands out. It is different. It is not just a reskin, a retheme of those other ones. It stands on its own two feet. It is deep enough that you don't need, you know, a stack of cards like this. This is more than enough. I like that. It's a small box. It's small overhead. It's small size on the shelf. That cannot be understated nowadays with the bloat that comes with all of this. The powers are unique. The powers are thematic to the elements. They make them incorporate. They make the ground ones more powerful. They make one of the shadow ones more different in terms of they're harder to hit. They're less tangible in that sense. So it works from a thematic side of things. The water is more fluid. It incorporates the theme much better than any of those other ones as well. There is less randomness in this game even though you are still drawing, it is much more able to be mitigated than those other two that I mentioned. Sometimes on those other two that I mentioned, in Crimson Company and Battle Line, it's on a wing and a prayer. I'm going to play this card and kind of see what happens next and how you know tactical it is based on what you've already played going forward. And so the essence of a dueling game is distilled into these different guilds that you are going to be playing with on a game by game basis. You are going to feel like a battlefield manipulator in terms of you think of all those movies where they know they're pushing with the little chess pieces here and you know pushing the bad guys over there on the map and they're like okay send the messages I want the left flank to move up here and then the right flank to and you're kind of doing that in a thematic way with these five battlefields simulating that while at the same time not overcomplicating how the battles are occurring. But also, again, this is the blessing curse. You are forcing your opponent to engage with you. This is, again, as a blessing and a curse, you are going to have to have conflict. If you do not want conflict in terms of battling and take that, this is not going to be a game for you. Now, what didn't I like? I mean, again, it's a meta game. So as someone who plays less repeatedly often of these types of games, because I have a lot and there are a lot out there, it's a little bit harder to get a sense of which ones are going to be the best together. And how much hate draft do you do sometimes? People may not like that. There is the potential for hate drafting. People may not like that. Like, I see that you're going for this faction, so you're going to then want this faction to go along with them. So I'm going to prevent you from doing that. The other thing that I think sometimes, again, is something I did not like was this one is a little bit heavier in terms of the thinkiness than those other two I mentioned, where it is purely tactical. There is much more strategy in this. And if you're looking for something that is more tactical, this really isn't it. And for me, I, I think I personally, now having compared them, I think I personally prefer a little bit more on the tactical side of things. But that's why there are so many of these, right? Different strokes for different folks. I have no doubts about why this got nominated for what it is and what it is showing in the first place. 
something else I just did not find myself appealing is, like I said, if you get a faction or two that does not suit your style, or you get two factions that are very much similar in what they do, it can severely cripple your side of things. Especially the first couple of times you play. And with a lot of these lighter games, like I mentioned, because there are so many nowadays, a first impression or two in these games can be, you know, very tricky. And if it's not to your most appeal, I can see people passing on it or saying it's not for me and not willing to give it another chance to see what sorts of interesting combinations they can make. Because that is the world of the hotness we live in nowadays, right? So all in all, who is this game for? You want something two-player, repeated plays, where the value is going to be offered on repetition, more strategic planning, synergizing with thematic incorporation, this is going to be more for you. If you want more of that tactical, a little bit of more luck-based, a little bit more randomization, this is not going to be probably as good for you as it would be for someone else. There you go. Hopefully that's a little bit helpful. That's Rift Force. Check it out if you're interested. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking and subscribing, hopefully. Stay classy. See you around.